that's a pretty common, familiar looking plant to me, right? But then check out these flowers. It's just beautiful. I've never seen anything like that. Just truly spectacular. A little orange tinge. Can you? Yeah, it's kind of focusing there. <laughs> hey, how about a little travel update? So, um, if you haven't watched a bucket list on a budget. I don't know if I'd say watch it or not. I'm, I want to redo that video, uh, but it's a concept I came up with. Um, bucket list on a budget. So there's many places I wanted to go and do see, many places and things I wanted to go and do and see, and I could never really afford it. I could never even dream of affording it. So I, I'm not going to get into the whole story, but the concept of bucket list on a budget came to me and what it is essentially, I'm going to shorten this all down, is finding a cheap place to live that gives you access to other places where it's either too costly to live or too far to get to or otherwise inaccessible, you know, monetarily. Um, so you find that cheap place and then you go off and, you know, check out these other places. So I put it into practice, but... 18, in fact, it was ac exactly 18 months ago. So I went to Portugal for a few months and then I went to Albania. And in Albania, um, you're right across the water from Italy. So I got to go to Italy. I went to Greece. I went to a bunch of other places. Um, I'm not gonna outline it all, but Albania was a, an inexpensive place for me to live. It was comfortable. The food was good. The people are amazing. And from there, it granted me easy and cheap access to many other places where I couldn't really afford more than, say, a weekend. Um, just because, you know, I'm on that uh, lower income scale. So the other, where this all came from, the idea came from the Philippines. So uh, I went back to America a few months ago and uh, had to get out of there, had to go. So... On my way out, I bounced through Japan, and I think the last update I did was in the Philippines. I just landed, and I'm sitting there in the Philippines, found a great little place to stop and hibernate a bit, and um, you know and that was kind of my plan, to just kind of slow down, hibernate, because I've been on the go. Like, I hadn't spent more than a week in any place uh, for a couple months. Pardon me. So I really wanted a place to kind of get grounded, and that was my intention. You know, spend a few months and get grounded. But <laughs> um, sitting there looking online, and I find a really cheap hotel price, and I'm like, "Wow, that's crazy cheap. Is that real?" And then I look at the flights, and I find flights, and I'm like, "Okay, uh, you just got to go, right?" So. What I found, I was in uh, Angeles City, Philippines, and I found some hotel prices under 30, uh, staying at Hilton, I get a free breakfast, um, and I'm downtown Kuala Lumpur, like Chow Kit, I'm right, right by the Chow Kit night market or market, and I'm walking distance to the towers, I'm, you know, it's a great location. Um, incredible location and it was under 40 a night um, the airfare getting here was um, I think round trip was about 240 so because I got the upgraded seat or so I could have a uh, check bag so I'm looking at all that and I'm uh, you know online I'm like well shit man go right why not um, you know, it, the lodging is only like 10% more than what I was paying in Angeles. And I get a free breakfast and blah, blah, blah. So it just made sense to go. So I got here super easy. Holy smokes. So you get to the airport, customs, everything's fine. It's great. 
uh, I flew Malaysian Air. Philippine Air flies the same route, but Malaysian was a little better timing for me. So you get off the plane, you, there's a fast uh, an express train takes you to Central, spelt with an S, uh, the, the Central Station. And then from there, I jumped a bus. That was like 12 bucks, I think, 10 bucks, 10 or 12 bucks. I jumped a bus, uh, got me within like 300 meters. It was a free bus. I guess they're going to start charging, uh, which is fine. You know, I was ready to pay. I just didn't know how to pay. Um, and that got me, I think it was GPS that I was 300 meters from the hotel or something. So I just walked it out. Uh, you can get grab here. I didn't uh, sign up and use it, but I, it is popping up. Um, I didn't ta haven't taken a taxi yet. And then from here, I've been walking everywhere. There's like crazy little neighborhoods and I love the markets. There's like food, there's, uh, you know, it's like a wet market type thing. Um, and then fruit markets. And then over here, there's like clothing and leather works and pretty much anything you would want in like a touristy market area, but it's not very touristy. There's a lot more locals here. Uh, to give you an idea on pricing, this is so funny to me. A double espresso here at the hotel in the rooftop bar is was 30 ringgit. So for seven ringgit, I got a plate with some rice sauce and quail eggs. Like it was a double portion of quail eggs. Um, so like seven or, or no, like eight or 10 quail eggs. I think 10 uh, little baby quail eggs. And this sauce, it's just fabulous. Like, they, it's so addictive. Like, I've been thinking about it all morning. I've had it like three or four times. So that was seven ringgit. You go across the the street from there, and you can get an iced tea, you know, for one ringgit there, or in a cup, or you go across the street, and in fact, it was this bottle of water. I got a big bottle of water for three ringgit. Um, so all in, you're at 10 ringgit, and that's like, I think, five bucks for dinner <laughs> just insane or you know 30 for a double espresso at the hotel um food is cheap food is fabulous is what i'm getting at you can spend as much as you want just like any other place in the world you can always spend as much money as you want but for just like cheap street food really great um I'm trying to remember I'm probably going to screw up the prices, but I want to say it was eight ringgit for 10 satays. I'm going to say that wrong too, but meat on a stick. I think it was, I'll double check, but I think it was eight ringgit for 10 satay. Um, you get a bag of chips. This is like three quarters of a bag of chips. So this is five ringgit. It's just uh, over a dollar under two bucks. Uh, these are local chips. There's a couple of different flavors. They've got all kinds of stuff in bags like this. Um, I didn't really care for these. There's some other ones. They're, they're onion flavored, which I'm not a big fan of onions, but they were really good chips. I don't have any more of those. Uh, avocados. I got three avocados for one ringgit each. Three avocados for three ringgits. So that kind of gives you an idea of the pricing. Uh, it's really cheap. So bucket list on a budget if you're in philippines living in philippines kuala lumpur is cheap it's close and it's easy getting on and off the tram was easy to sort out it has a kiosk uh, from the airport to central and the bus uh i don't know how they're going to charge now but it was a free bus that i took and getting around town you know for me so far it's just been super easy uh, super affordable. Hey, just a quick clip here. So when you take the train from the airport to Central, you can then grab a monorail. I didn't know about this, but you can grab a monorail for like I don't know, $2. It takes you straight to the, uh, you know, right to the hotel. It's even easier than the bus. I thought the bus was easier. The monorail is even easier. It's just crazy. So look for that. It's on a budget. You know, if you're living in the Philippines, you want to bounce over to Kuala Lumpur, it's easy, it's cheap. Customs was easy. Uh, you know, as an American citizen, I think you get uh, 60 or 90 days. I didn't even check my passport. Um, I, but, you know, it just kind of blows me away. 
I don't know where the passport stamp is. I'm looking for my passport stamp. There's the exit from the Philippines. Yeah, Malaysia. So it doesn't even tell me. I think it's a 90 day, uh, just show up and you get a 90 day visitor's pass, if I remember right. But uh, if you got a passport, use it. You know, get out and use it. And the whole bucket list on a budget thing, it, it's really amazing to me, you know, some of the fabulous places you can go and the things you can do if you cut out the air travel. You know, to just think about this, like, you know, I've always wanted to go to Japan. I finally got that done this year. Um, but, you know, to plan a trip to Japan, you're looking $1,000 in air travel. To plan a trip to the Philippines, $1,000 in air travel. You know, rounding numbers, you know, you can always find deals. But round numbers, you know, you're looking at $1,000 to go anywhere on this side of the world from California. Um and that adds up quickly. So to save a thousand dollars is two or three months of budget. But if you're over here and your rent is less, your food is less, and you're able to save, say, twice as much as you would in the States, now that what would have been a weekend trip you know, to a different city in California now becomes a trip to a different country, a different city, different culture, different food, different everything, and all for about the same price. Um, you know, it just blows me away. Uh, so that's the bucket list on a budget. That's a travel update. Um, Kuala Lumpur, amazing city. I will say, bring an umbrella. It seems to rain every day. It's about to rain right now. I was going to go out, but I'm watching the sky, and uh, it's about to rain. Every afternoon, it's that tropical... You know, same thing as I experienced in Georgia the right time of year. You know, just every day at 3 o'clock or whatever, it starts raining. Um, but getting around has been super easy. And, you know, navigating the stores and finding everything I need, it's just been super easy. And it's a beautiful little city. Um, there are a lot of people who speak English. I haven't had a lot of conversations with locals. Um, but, you know, English isn't as prevalent as a lot of other places on the planet, but you can definitely get by. And even when they don't speak English, um, you know, I've gotten by without even pulling out the translator, the Google. So yeah, I fully recommend, um, you know, if you're sitting in the Philippines, you know, and you want to go check something out jump a plane and I'll probably put together, I, I did film some uh, like food and shopping reports, kind of like I did in Japan with the, the 7-Eleven. And I'll probably put together, you know, a little more, but that's a, a basic update of where I'm at, what I'm doing. And, you know, this bucket list on a budget, it does work. It's easy. And it's, you know, it's a real, viable option um once you cut the cord cut the anchor and move abroad you know there's a lot of things that open up to you um and it really amazes me that uh, it took me so long to get out and use my passport so you go have a great day okay so i'm here at the chow kit station in uh kuala Lumpur, and you see there's a real easy map and this kiosk is super easy it handles cash only and it'll tell you what bills it accepts what it doesn't and then it gave me this little chip uh to get on the train let me check yeah so then you just go through there and get on the light rail it takes you right to central station super easy it was uh 3.7 ringgit uh to get from chow kit to central on the monorail and it, it breaks down like look here it breaks down the different ways to travel and gives you tickets for all those different ways uh, so it makes it super easy and you can hit the English button right there at the top right uh, big kudos to whoever designed this because as an international traveler this is like as easy as it gets 
it, for me, this is, you know, it can't get much simpler. Um, especially since I don't like tapping my credit card for anything. Pretty loud, but pretty funny. I was busy shooting that video downstairs about the machine, and I just missed the, the train. So I don't know how long I have to wait, but I'm gonna sit down and take a load off. These benches are funny, and I'll tell you, if you're wearing pants, be careful, because they are slick. That stain polished stainless steel, and I almost slid right off the back of one the other day. So sit very deliberately and carefully. I think I missed it again. Maybe I'll catch it soon. But it says uh, train frequency every 10 minutes. Super, super easy and courteous. Okay, we'll just sit through it. So that's the... Uh, That's probably coming out backwards on the camera. I don't know. Yeah, every 10 minutes. So not a long wait at all. Pretty, pretty happy with the public transportation system here. It is top notch. Check out this beautiful rooster. I won't turn now. Spread his wings for me when I first got here. It's just gorgeous.